No me mires que me mata No te quites la ropa Que te roben Bueno aquí llegué a Seattle <risa> Hasta que se seque el malegón Y mañana pescamos salmón Gracias a los GPS si no más nunca llego Pescando en los callos Eso es lo que quiero el capitán que se llama Diego, ay yo no me quejo, pescando en los callos, pesco lo que quiero, con el capitán que se llama Diego, ay yo no me quejo, tú puedes pescar con él, rubia, chena y colorado, pescando en los callos, pesco lo que quiero, con el capitán que se llama Diego, ay yo no me quejo. Pescando los callos trae ustedes por... Ashley Light Bates, Florida Fish and Wildlife, Arian Seafood Market and Restaurant, Mercury Marine, Mako Boats, Florida Keys and Key West, y su tienda completa para el pescador, el cazador y mucho más, Bass Pro Shops. Bueno, tempranito por la mañana aquí en Astoria, un pueblecito que todavía no lo he podido ver, porque entré de noche y salí de noche a pescar. Vamos a cruzar ahora un puente de Oregon a Washington, en Iwaco, en el pueblo de Chinook, hay una marina. Esta pesca de salmón es muy regulada y como en la Florida, tiene que tener su licencia de pesca, bueno, aquí en Oregón también. Visitamos el pueblo histórico de Chinook, donde compro mi licencia de pesca, no solo de salmón, pero de sturgeon también. Bueno amigos, aquí me encuentro con Capitán Jim Martin. Jim, how are you doing today, sir? Diego, good to see you. Thanks. Welcome to Oregon. Thank you, thank you. And I'm fired up to be here. <laughs> you know, I went to three different states to make it here. I finally made it. Amigo, tres diferentes eh, ciudades. Pero aquí estoy con Jim Martin. Vamos a pescar salmon. Oh, yeah. I've never caught a salmon, Jim, but you probably don't know that. Well, you're going to get them today because we got a million salmon at the mouth of the Columbia. They're going up to spawn. They're all gathering here. Okay. They're, uh... They're making the transition from a saltwater fish to a freshwater fish. They're highly excited, and we're going to be fishing with three or four hundred of our closest friends. I see, I see. I was, <laughs> I was coming through the pass under the Rio de Washington. I was passing the Washington from Oregon, and I saw tons of boats. Lots of boats. Everybody's so, here. So that's a beautiful thing. This is the biggest fishery on the West Coast this time of year, all of August. I've been taking friends and conservation partners for 30 days fishing now. And uh, every day, and we just get them, and we enjoy them, and we learn to appreciate them. Is there is there a bag limit? Is there a size limit on Oh, there? yeah. There's all kind, it's a very tightly regulated uh, fishery because we've got lots of hatchery fish that are bred for us to take home and eat. Right. We've got some wild fish that are healthy, but we've got a lot of wild fish that are not healthy. So we're balancing the fishery I between see. protecting the ones that need protecting and enjoying the ones that need to be enjoyed. And I so see. the fishery is very tightly regulated on bag limits and on seasons and on quotas. And I'll explain all that because I used to be the fishery manager oh, that see. managed this fishery. I see. And you're the one that actually helped. I helped you set know, this up. Yo me acuerdo que Capitán Jim me invitó. Ven para que peque salmón. I remember that day. So yes. here I am. Right. I'm ready. Welcome. Thank you, sir. Let's fire up and go fishing. Let's do it. Amigo, ya pronto regresamos. No se nos vaya. on both sides okay but the key will be for us to be able to present the bait properly to the fish with the proper speed so i'm going to sneak over to the oregon side to get the protection the wind won't be so strong there it'll kind of protect us so we can present the bait properly to the fish so that's strategy number one the salmon ahora está migrando a esta área pero las condiciones cambiaron hasta ayer estuvo muy soleado pero este clima aunque no sale muy con cámara, para mí es favorable porque estamos en este ambiente. Y ese es el mensaje que le quiero mandar a ustedes, que se sientan que están aquí con nosotros. Ay, en tus ojos, el verde esmeralda que brota del mar. Y en tu boquita, la sangre marchita que tiene el coral y en la cadencia de tu voz divina la ritmia de amor Captain Jim, so this is... This is the Cape Disappointment 
Lewis and Clark didn't like it very well when they got here at the end of their journey. It was wet, it was moldy. Like it is now. <laughs> it's a little cool. So they were pretty disappointed. So it's called the Cape Disappointment. There's a, a lighthouse here for helping with navigation. Mm -hmm. There's a, a very famous Coast Guard station here, the Cape Disappointment Coast Guard Station, okay. where they train Coast Guardsmen to do rescues in heavy water all over the world. They come here I to see. learn how to do it. Uh, and it's a great place to fish. So these jetties were created here to protect from the storms. Right. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers created these jetties because in the winter, the big southern storms push in and they can endanger the harbors and ports. So the, uh, the jetties, north and south jetties, nozzle the river so it helps carry the sand out of the river. And the big A jetty here that we're looking at was created to help protect the port of Ilwaco from the big southern storms that come in. A little hard outgoing tide, it creates a little eddy in here. Right, well the fish are looking for protection. They don't want to fight that hard ebb, ebb tide, but they don't want to get pushed in the ocean. So what they do is they approach the side of the river, and they're looking for any little eddy, any little protected safe area. We're taking advantage of the fact that the big A jetty here creates a huge gyre, a huge eddy. I see. When the hard outgoing tide pushes fish in here, and it's very calm in here, it's right. rip, ripping out there. I see, I see. And it's so what we're going to do is sneak in here and fool them. <laughs> That's usually what happens. You got to have a little move. angle. You yeah. see it in Florida the same way. The fish yeah. are trying to avoid a tide. They're going to get behind a piling. That's why bridge piers are so good. You know, the fish are trying to find protected areas where they cannot use so much energy and they can feed. Right. And this is exactly at this tide, the spot. And it's dawn. It's perfect. Perfect. This is the time to be here. Absolutely. La pesca es un arte, sea agua dulce o agua salada. Mientras mejor artista usted sea, mejor pescador será. These fish feed on squid in the ocean. It's got an anchovy on it that's uh, kinked so it'll rotate real fast. Okay. And then it's got a little spinner, and that spinner simulates the gills of the fish. This little red dot whipping around makes it look like the gills of a fish. Okay. And, uh, and it's very attractive to the fish. They love it. Okay. The purpose of the diver is to present the fish at the right depth. The purpose of the flasher is for them to think it's other fish feeding. Because out in the ocean, they often will find food by watching where other fish are feeding, and they'll see the flash. So this flasher will flash light, and it'll attract salmon. They'll say, oh, there's food over there. There's fish feeding. And then this is the anchovy, and you see I've got it curved so that it'll, it'll roll in the water. It'll flip in the water. Uh, it'll look like a wounded bait. Is that spider wire? Or? This is Berkeley fire line. Fire line. And okay. it's uh, called tracer braid. It's three feet of high vis, three feet of low vis. So a lot of guys like the high vis to be able to watch where the line goes in, but they're afraid of tying the high vis line too close to their terminal area. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you got three feet of dark line. You can tie your terminal gear to the dark line, but you still got the high vis showing you where you're at. Kind of the best of both worlds. Right. That way you can see it. <laughs> Here he comes. Good job. Woo! Here's what we're looking for is this little pin. Right there. That little fin right there. See it? Yep. Nice wild fish. So we'll turn him loose. We'll bring him up here and. El salmón cojo silvestre se reconoce por la aleta dorsal trasera intacta. El cojo de criadero se la cortan ante su tal al mar. A muchos nos priva el salmón y muchos lo consumimos, pero no todo salmón es igual. Aquí en Adrián Fis pueden adquirir el salmón salvaje fresco. Lo pueden llevar para su casa o consumirlo aquí en nuestro restaurante. ¿Conoce usted Adrián Restaurante y Pescadería? En Adrián Seafood se le ofrece una gran selección de todo tipo de mariscos, como langostas, cangrejos, ostiones, salmón siempre fresco, rabirrubias, pargos, chernas y el maravilloso pez perro siempre fresco en Adrián para llevar o comer aquí, frito y delicioso. Yo me impresioné cuando visité a Adrián con su gran selección de mariscos y su limpieza. Visiten hoy a Adrián que estoy seguro que usted también estará impresionado con la pura frescura de mariscos frescos en Adrián. Dads are great. 
they keep us safe. They teach us all kinds of stuff and do fun things with us. They can be really funny. I think about my dad a lot. I miss him. I wish he had thought about me and worn his life jacket. I got a little protocol for the boat, just like you do being a captain. And right. it's safety first. Exactly. And I explain to people, we don't leave the dock unless everybody's got their life jacket on. Mm -hmm. We don't leave the dock unless both motors work. The GPS has to be working. The VHF radio has to be working. And the bilge pump has to be working. And I test every one of them every morning. Every morning. If, if not all of them are working, we don't leave the dock until they are. It makes sense. Because you get out there on the Columbia River, you don't want to take a chance on endangering people. Mm -hmm. So you got to have your safety equipment. Well, you got to be jacketed up. Then you're ready to have fun. That's it. Amigos, siempre, la seguridad es número uno, como explica Capitán Jim. So, Captain Diego, we're going by the Desdemona lot marker right now. It's called the checkerboard marker. And it denotes, it's a safety factor that allows you to know where the big sandbar is in the center of the river. It's called the Desdemona Sands, and at low tide it actually comes out of water. And then at high tide it's just barely underwater. So if you don't know what you're doing, you can just go right across the middle of the river and skid right out on the sand, and then you're stuck. So we always try to avoid the Desdemona Sands, try to stick to either the shipping channel on the right-hand side, which is the Oregon side, or the shipping channel on the left hand side, which is the Washington side. Vamos a dejarlo que llega a 30. Capitán Jim estaba trabajando diferentes áreas. Siempre hay que ajustarse para el día y las condiciones. Siempre hay que revisar las carnadas para estar seguro que están nadando correctamente. Vamos a ponerlo aquí a 30. Me explica el Capitán Jim que lo ponga a 30 pies. Estos carretes de pen, squalls, con line counter son buenísimos. Como pueden ver, para esta aplicación, tanto como pescar coronados en los barcos hundidos en los callos y allá en la sur de la Florida. Vamos a llevarlo a 30. Estamos mirando a ver si es un cojo. Es un wild fish. Wild fish, we have to let him go. Este silvestre hay que soltarlo. Capitán Jim nos va a explicar por qué hay que soltarlo. There he goes. All right. He's just fine. Él sabía que soltarlo porque era silvestre. Aunque pesque comercial o recreacional, las regulaciones aquí son igual. Dos por persona y solo se pueden quedar con dos salmones marcados que son de criaderos. Los silvestres hay que soltarlos. Los cambios y corrientes en esta pesca son muy anticipados por todos los pescadores. Miramos los tight charts y el capitán Jim decide moverse y posicionarse antes del cambio de corriente para estar preparado. Frío aquí, intenso. Mientras más levantes días al revés, más frío hay. Pero no nos estamos quejando, estamos pescando. La compañía PEN fabrica diferentes estilos de carretes, siendo de bobina abierta o convencionales. Esta pesca se pesca con carretes convencionales, ya con el contador integrado en el carrete. Se usa con una línea trenzada llamada Trace de Berkeley. Visitamos a Bass Pro Shops en Miami. Soy Alex Gutierrez de Bass Pro Shops Miami y hoy estoy aquí a enseñarle los carretes eh, convencionales de PEN eh, que se llaman el Warfare. Lo interesante de este carrete es que vienen con Line Counter, Level Wine. El Warfare también viene con la opción de devanador que monta la línea parejo de un lado al otro y no deja que se monte demasiado a un lado. El beneficio del contador de línea es que deja uno posicionar la carnada en la profundidad que uno quiera. Los carretes Warfare usan los frenos HT100 que son hechos de fibra de carbón. Se ofrecen en tres diferentes tamaños, el 15, el 20 y el 30. Si le deciden poner monofilamento, le pueden poner el tamaño 15, de 12 a 20 libras monofilamento. El 20 le pueden poner de 15 a 25. Y el 30 le pueden poner de 25 a 40. Le puedo poner monofilamento o braid, pero vienen preparados para amarrarle el braid directo al carrete. Cualquier pregunta que tengan de estos carretes o cualquier otro producto aquí en Bass Pro Shops, visiten nosotros aquí en Miami 
Mi nombre es Alex Gutiérrez o cualquiera de nuestros representantes le podrá ayudar. Bass Pro Shops. It's more than a store. It's great service from folks who know what they're talking about. It's a low price guarantee. And free events that are fun for the whole family. It's great brands from Coleman and North Face to Redhead and Ascend. Bass Pro Shops, where great service, great prices, and the great outdoors all meet up. There's never been a better time to come to Bass Pro Shops than right now. Estamos pescando diferentes áreas. Depende de la corriente, nos movemos. Y quiere decir que hay diferentes profundidades. Eso hay constantemente que estar cambiando y monitoreando la carnada. No se lo han llevado. Interesante. Este tipo de pesca. Estamos tratando de pescar dos diferentes salmones. El cojo y el chinook. Hay que tener mucha paciencia. Tranquilo. No me quiero ir sin un pescadito. Ya que mi molde de King Selfish Mount me espera. What's real crucial here is to present the bait at the right depth, just above the bottom. Okay. So what we know is it's uh, 25 feet deep right now. Because of the angle, I can let these out to 35 feet, and, and because the angle, it'll uh, present the bait just above a 25-foot bottom. Which is exactly what you want. And which is exactly what you want. So the fish are on the bottom, and they see this bait come by, and they'll come up and grab it. Oh, I see. So I'm going up to 35. I engage the click. The click on these is great, so when the fish hit, we'll hear the click and we'll notice the bite. Mm -hmm. Poco a poco, muy a los 35. Vamos a ver, espero que se pegue un chinook o un cojo. Normalmente dice que los cojos están más en aguas llanas. Jim, you were saying that the coho salmon are usually in shallower water. Right. They love it under 20 feet, where the Chinook tend to be 30, 35, 40 feet deep. Okay. So this is really a prime spot for coho salmon. Coho salmon. They've been pushed into the shore by the hard outgoing tide. Now the tide is softening. So they're just right in here in the shallow water. And uh, the tide's about to change. It should excite them right now. Como nos explica el Capitán, estas son perfectas condiciones para la pesca, quiere decir la marea está ya casi al tope y va a empezar a vaciar y esta área aquí por eso que están todos los pescadores pescando la orilla del mar. Social Security Beach. Social Security Beach, because all the retirees park out here and park their cars and throw their rods out and catch these fish that are hugging the edge. What a way to retire, huh? This is Clatsop State Park. This is a fin clip, adipose fin clip, white gum line, little coho. We'll turn him loose. There he goes. Nice. <laughs> All right, nice. El salmón cojo se puede distinguir si es silvestre o de criadero simplemente por la aleta dorsal trasera. Los de criadero le cortan la aleta dorsal y son los que el pescador se puede quedar con él para consumir. Los aletas son silvestres y hay que soltarlos. Decidí visitar a Social Security Beach para ver el río Columbia de otras perspectivas y ver cómo los pescadores retirados pasan sus días. Caminando conocí a una señora muy agradable que me ofreció un tour a la playa de los retirados. Tell you like fishing a lot. Oh yeah. I was out yesterday. I caught a native Chinook and I could have kept it, but I just figure any little guy this big that makes it all the way down this river and survives for two or three years out in the ocean and then makes it back needs to be in the gene pool yeah so you did your put your good deed for the day yeah they'll be catching fish was that is that the law you got to let go of all the um wild wild caught fish sundays and mondays i have to release all of the native cohos but on sunday and monday you have to release the native chinooks but the rest of the time you can keep them some of those fish if you find especially the native fish in the little lake where I fish, there are um, cutthroat trout, and they've got these the, 
the gill slits down here are red. That's why they call them cutthroat. Big black spots on their back. They're so beautiful. I don't know how anybody can kill them. I guess it's the bad thing. They taste so good, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the more they say on television, they're good for you with omega-3 fats. The more yeah. Folks want to consume them even more. Well, I appreciate the ride, the tour. El cambio de marea y la corriente, como nos explica el Capitán Jim, es lo más importante para pescar en el río. Pero si les digo, para la pesca de agua salada es igual. Sabiendo las horas de las mareas y las corrientes y pescar en esos tiempos es la diferencia de pescar o irse en blanco. Como pueden ver, la pesca es un arte y las corrientes muy muy importante en todo tipo de pesca. Ya regresamos. Nitro, built for speed, built to fish, built to be a champion. That's why they're America's favorite performance fishing boats. Introducing the all new Z series. The Z18, Z19 and Z20 are built on our revolutionary NVT hull, an advancement in design that keeps Nitro on the forefront of tournament technology. And the Z21 is the choice of the world's best anglers. Award-winning reliability, fishability, and performance. It's what makes every Nitro a champion. What makes the perfect place? Is it the subtlety of its riches or the vibrance of its colors? Is it the lushness of its nature or the liveliness of its people? The perfect place inspires you, rewards you, electrifies you. And here in the Florida Keys, we have a name for it, Isla Mirada, just perfect. So I have different strategies I use for low tide, for flood, for high tide, for ebb. Oh, I see. So four big stages of the tide every twice every day. Okay. Basically with the same bait, same system. Same system, just how you position it. Shallow water, deep water, fast troll, trolling with the current or, or holding against the current. Okay. Those are the major variables. Los cargamentos están entrando al río Columbia y la marea también. Esta es la marea que estábamos esperando. Escuchan bien mi maranca. Y el guiro que la acompaña. Un poquito de jugo porque hace falta un poquito de suerte. Vamos a echarle un poquito de jugo. Vamos a traer el salmón que viene aquí a buscar. Vamos. Y siempre en todo tipo de pesca revisen el, el freno. and see if he's wild or hatchery. Ahí cogimos primero. Estamos mirando a ver si es un cojo. He's a wild fish. Wild fish, we have to let him go. Esto es silvestre, hay que soltarlo. There he goes. All right. He's just fine. We don't mind releasing the wild fish. We'll get some hatchery fish. Oh, yeah. All right. It's early, we're confident. Oh, you did a great job of fighting him. The way you lifted him to the net, excellent. Every fish has a different technique, but they're all more or less the same. Exactly. You know, you gotta, you gotta play around with them, keep the tension, like you told me earlier. Very yeah. important to keep the tension on them. Yeah, especially with barbless hooks. 
But barbless hooks also make it easier to release the fish, and we want to protect these wild fish. And that's the reason they're barbless. Yes. So when, when you release them, they're not harmed. Exactly. Yes. Well, put the net away, and let's get another. A muchos nos priva el salmón, y muchos lo consumimos, pero no todo salmón es igual. El salmón de criadero es más grande que el salmón silvestre, y tiene mayor contenido de grasa, pero también tiene niveles más altos de ácidos grasos, omega 3 y omega 6, los cuales aportan beneficio para su salud tal como equilibrio de los niveles de ácidos grasos del cuerpo. Pero pocos saben la diferencia entre salmón de granja y salmón salvaje. El de granja es criado y alimentado por el humano, y el salmón salvaje se pesca en ambiente natural, en los océanos, los ríos y los lagos. En un estudio realizado por el Instituto Cornell sugiere que el salmón salvaje es mejor opción, ya que contiene menos productos químicos. Edúcase usted y decida cuál usted prefiere consumir. Yo quiero coger un pescado hoy. Ya pronto, digo, pez, pescado será cuando me lo coma. <laughs> the bite's gonna happen, it'll happen in the next 45 minutes, and we'll get in on it. So watch all, look at all these boats. They're all holding in place over, pointed into the current. The current's coming this way. Oh, just saw a salmon. Just saw a salmon roll right in front of us. Yep. So they roll like tarpon. Yes. Now see, this is these hooks are on a fixed leader, mm -hmm. but you got to have the right distance for the some some baits are small, some baits are big. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I wrap around here until I take up enough line. Poquito de suerte, vamos a echar un poquito de jugo. Por eso me va a traer el salmón que vine aquí a buscar. Contemplar en el cielo. Pueden ver está nadando como tiene que estar en esta situación ya que cambió el tiempo, el viento cambiado y está un poquito más difícil la pesca pero siempre hay que ajustarse para el día y las condiciones vamos a setearlo y ponerlo en el el reflejo del mar y a pescar y ahora empieza ya le empiezan a picar got two coho, so check coho Okay, under the column for coho. Okay, and uh, then circle hatchery as opposed to wild. So right there, yeah. Okay, and it's area 519. 519. This helps the uh, game departments figure out where the fish are caught and monitor the catch, keep them within conservation guidelines. Very, very important for the anglers to have their license on them and mark each fish when they catch them. Good job. Perfect. Thank you. Las regulaciones tanto en la Florida como en Oregón hay que respetarlas. Capitán Jim consideró un día flojo de pesca, pero yo estoy contento. Se cogió seis pescados, cuatro se regresaron al agua y dos de criadero, mi límite, ya en la nevera. Esta pesca fue diferente y una gran experiencia para mí aquí en el río Columbia, que separa Oregón y Washington y de esta gran ciudad histórica, Astoria. <música> Contemplar en el cielo Espero que hayan disfrutado del programa esta semana que en sí fue una gran experiencia para mí. Yo lo disfruté al máximo. Y ahora tengo mi nuevo tope con conversación de la memoria de este viaje con mi montaje de King Selfish Mouse de Salmón Cojo. Gracias a King Selfish Mouse. Adiós. Dile a tu mamá que te deje bailando, bailando mi son. Accomplished anglers recognize King Selfish Mouse as the industry leader. What started as an effort to increase conservation awareness has evolved into a challenge to handcraft the most lifelike mounts available. With a rich combination of lacquers, pearls, and iridescence, we reproduce the most striking colors imaginable, bringing back both the memory and the thrill. At King Sailfish, it's all about catch and release and preserving our sport for future generations. Visit us at kingsailfishmounts.com.